Okay, guys, I think we can start punctual. So this is a session about OpenStack quality assurance, um, a beginner session. So I will talk about the very basics of OpenStack quality assurance. Um, my name is Mark. I am um, have been working for Deutsche Telekom, um, and I'm a core team member of OpenStack Tempest, which is a project inside of the QA program. So the agenda for today is we will talk about the program, um, um, what, what, uh, what kind of projects are in that program, why are they in the QA program. Um, we will talk about the continuous integration system and uh, what kind of system triggers the quality assurance process. Um, and then we will go in uh, one pro in particular one project into a deep dive where I show how um, actual tests have to look like and how to write these tests. And at the end, uh, we can talk about where we need help in the QA program for um, contributors. So. At first, I will start with uh, motivation. So th my personal motivation to contribute to OpenStack QA. Um, on the one hand, I think we there's a lot of uh, discussions about the quality of OpenStack. Um, I, as I started with OpenStack in, uh, during the Grizzly release cycle, we had a lot of discussions about um, is OpenStack enterprise ready? So the question is, how can somebody solve this? And I think one of uh, one possibility is um, to um, yeah contribute to OpenStack QA and to make OpenStack a more robust and uh, reliable product. So currently, I think we have a lot of discussions about carrier grade. So at least from from for my um, view as. Uh, employee of a telco, I heard every day um, is OpenStack carrier grade. And I think one of the um, solutions would be that a lot of people contribute to the QA program and bring their feedback in the community. So this is one, one motivation. Another motiv motivation that I have is the, the team of the QA program. So usually if you're an OpenStack or an open source developer, you choose your program or your your um, yeah your your contribution where you like to contribute. You have a lot of freedom, and I I, see, I think we in the QA program have a really good um, um, team spirit. You can join our um, IRC channel, just uh, write a question, and you will see there will be a lot of people involved and they will help you to set up your quality assurance pro process. Um, and our, the team is split around the whole globe, so we, ha we can capture all the time zones from Japan to Europe to US. So let's go a bit deeper, deeper in the, the QA program. Um, so the, the main thing you will have to, to keep in mind the QA program isn't inside of a project of the OpenStack core. It's usually external. So we have a running cloud system somewhere. It could be your production cloud. It could be um, your continuous integration cloud, whatever. You have one cloud, and you want to validate if, you, um, if this cloud works or not. So there's one, um, there's one uh, core uh, project that is called Tempest. So Tempest actually holds all the um, tests that are um, run. Um, and we have a var variety of tests. So we have, for instance, API tests. So they are usually quite simple. They go to a certain kind of API of OpenStack and checks if everything works. We have more um, complex scenario tests that tries to validate uh, real-life scenarios, like I want to boot two VMs with a network and try um, if they really can connect to each other. So this would be in scenario tests, and um, yeah, it will validate this thing. 
Um, we have other tests like more non-functional tests like stress tests. So they run every night and have a look if your OpenStack cloud really um, is robust enough to handle a lot of stress. Um, something what is new in Tempest during that cycle is that we are now separating our test cases and the actual framework. So the Tempest lib is created during this cycle and we will uh, enhance it um, during the next cycle. So one important thing um, in, in cloud is always automation. So for to, to really test and state of, of OpenStack, we have to have a tool that sets up a cloud. So in our program, we have a tool called DevStack, which is a shell script, mainly a shell script, that sets up an OpenStack cloud. Um, so we use this for our continuous integration system to build our, our um, um, OpenStack installation and then verify if the state of the OpenStack um, that is built are, is really um, work, workable. So um, then we have another one called Grenade. So I think um, during the keynotes we, we heard about something um, that OpenStack needs to have processes to upgrade the cloud. And Grenade, Grenade does that. It, it uses a stable branch, um, set it up with DevStack, verified that the OpenStack installation works with Tempest, and then it will upgrade the cloud to the new state and verifies if everything works. For sure, what is important is that, um, they uh, that during the upgra upgrade pro uh, process, there must be certain artifacts built that something is really in the system where it can up be upgraded. And then after that, we verify that the upgrade was successful. So this is one, I think, important piece to reach that goal that OpenStack is upgradable or easy upgradable. So these are the main projects that we have in the QA program. So Tempest for tests, DevStack to build a cloud, but only for development or continuous integration system. It's not a production cloud. And Grenade to upgrade a cloud and test the cloud during upgra upgrades. So important to understand is that we usually, for our systems, we, we build an open stack and we verify it th uh, through APIs if it really works. Um, inside of the projects, we have other quality assurance efforts like unit tests. So Keystone, for instance, has unit tests inside. We have um, usually in the projects um, other um, things like uh, code style checks and so on that are in the projects. W we usually have other view. We want to have a running cloud and verify it against it. So. Another thing which is quite important for the QA, because this is why QA was started, I would say, uh, the gate process. So the gate process is usually, if you're an, you, you, you are a an, an developer and have a certain patch or a delta that you want to contribute to OpenStack, you have to go through a process. And after many days and um, many reviews and comments, you will reach your goal that it's mar merged into the master of OpenStack. So this is the picture for the review process. Um, this um, is quite often shown. So on the right side, you see your local environment. You, you as a developer, develop your code and um, have it locally. And in the middle here, here we have um, a review system. So we do several things. On the one hand, we do our automated testing. And on the other hand, we have manual code reviews going on from the code uh, core um, pr uh, reviewers in the projects or from the community at all. So if you up upload your patch onto the Garrett system, autom what auto automatically is triggered is a, a, a Zool job and this is our check queue. So here, Tempest will be, or yeah, Tempest with DevStack will run some time and, and tr try to, to um, test your patch if it really works or not. After that, if 
um, your patch works and all the core reviewers or two co at least two core reviewers agree to this patch, it will go to the gate queue and it will be actually merged into the master of a project. So I think quite um, the, the basic process is like that, that the, the patch comes in, the VM is already built and DevSec runs and creates um, from that state. So with your patch, it creates an, an OpenStack installation and Tempest will run um, all the um, functional tests against the VM and tries uh, yeah, try, tries the patch. At the end, what you the result will be is a plus one and minus one in the review system. So plus one means yes, your patch works, everything is fine. Minus one, something went wrong. Please have a look. So let's go a bit deeper in Tempest. So as I said, Tempest is the framework for the actual tests. Um, so we have a, a var variety of tests. We have API tests, which are trying to directly go to the API of an OpenStack server and tries a certain ca test case. As I already mentioned, scenario tests, which is more real-life behavior tests. We have command line tests. So this is something that is important to understand that nearly all the tests have their own REST client. So we directly connect to an OpenStack API. We are not using the command line tools, but those CLI tests will do. So they directly use the command line tools and try to, to use them. We have some third party tests for libraries that are important and we have negative tests. So they trying to um, do something wrong and we want to test this, this behavior um, if the right risk error code comes back and so on. Um, usually these test cases are quite simple to read and uh, I think uh, also to write because we are trying to um, reduce the, the uh, uh, complexity by using um, a class model. So we usually put all the um, common functions and functionality that we need um, into our base classes. So here, as an example, a flavor test, so creating an OpenStack flavor, um, inherits from a base compute test. So a lot of functionality is already implemented in the base compute test, and some uh, functionality is imp implemented in the base test case. So at the end, we will have a quite short test um, that possibly just creates a flavor, and it's just some few lines, because we can reuse a lot of functionality in our framework. So um, around these test cases, we have the, uh, the Tempest framework, where, where we are um, currently trying to move everything to Tempest library. Um, so as I already mentioned, we have our own REST clients. They are using inheritance as well. So here we have a base class called REST client. And for each client, for flavors, for a lot of things, uh, volumes and so on, we have here our own API clients that are directly connected to the, to, um, to the API servers. Um, we're doing a lot of other things, like we're checking the response automatically. So we have, so this is a schema validation. So we're, um, we're getting our results. We have a definition how the result should look like. It's a, it's a, it's a JSON definition, and we check if the schema that comes back um, is really that what we want. Mm, we have automatic negative tests. This is the same approach. Um, we have a definition how um, a request is built. And with this information, we can automatically generate negative tests. Like if you, if you, if there is, you have to uh, um, put a parameter for memory, you could, and instead of sending an integer value to this API, you can directly use a string and it doesn't make makes no sense and you expect an error. So this is something that you can automatically create out of the auto negative tests. Um, another thing quite important, authentication. You usually don't have to care a lot of, uh, about authentication. This is everything is already handled in the base classes in, in our frameworks. So you just um, describe what you want to test and it will be, and the authentication will be handled um, yeah, under the hood. 
Um, sure, we have stress tests. This is an, uh, a special case CLI framework because I mean we, we will we will execute some shell commands. We have to parse it and so on. This is something that uh, is done by the CLI framework. Important thing is that. Tempest has unit tests, so as all the others, all the other um, um, libraries or projects inside of OpenStack, we have unit tests there. Um, Javelin is a process for Grenade to uh, create artifacts. So Grenade is the upgrade framework. We want to have some artifacts that we can test on. So this is a quite quite simple test case here that I want to show. So um, this test case just gets a flavor and tries to validate if everything is fine with this flavor. Um, so we see actual only two active code lines here. So it, it executes self-client get flavor details. So this is a function that is defined in the client class, um, already predefined. So, and we, we rely on uh, already defined flavor that is configured in Tempest. And what we get as result is a response code and a flavor ID. And after that, what is quite important is if you have a result in the test case, you have to verify if this uh, result is actual that what you want. So this self.assert equal is the, ch the actual ch the check of the test case if it works if it really works. So this is basically a quite simple test. And But if you browse through the API tests in Tempest, you will see a lot of those tests are quite simple and look like this. Um, so some guidi guidance how to write good tests. For sure, the, the test name is quite important, because if the test fails, you will see that in the logs. And other developers that have some issues maybe with this test, they have to identify what is going on there. There is it something that I broke or is it something that is broken in the system? So a test name is quite, quite uh, important for us. Um, if you see that on in, in the test file that you're in, you see that a lot of functionality is copy and paste through all the, uh, through, through all the files. You, you should think about um, reusing functionality, you put it into a base class or put it into some helper classes uh, or uh, helper functions and, and uh, reuse the functionality. Um, quite important is that you, if you create something, you have to check if this creation works try to check everything right away on the line where you, you created because you want to fail fast. Um, we have a lot of tests, thousands of tests that run every day. Um, it takes a time, I think 50, uh, 45 minutes, something like that. Um, so it takes the time and it, it's quite important that it fails fast. It doesn't, it, it makes no sense to, to create all the resources and it takes two minutes and then we, you check the results, check them right away. Um, another one is quite important to clean up the resources that you create. So if this test here would create a, a flavor, a certain flavor, it would be important that you clean up your things that you created. Because after that, the, if you do not clean it up, you will, the Tempest won't do it and you have some um, yeah, resources left at the test case run, which is quite problematic for, let's say, production environments because they will have some resources left. So, a question now for the project, um, where do we need help? Um, so, as I already mentioned, we are still quite focused on um, quality assurance that run in our continuous integration system, because this is mainly the thing what um, yeah, what runs? I think 99% of the test cases. But we are quite Im, uh, um, quite um, interested in feedback from operators that run our test framework um, in their production cloud or in their uh, test cloud. So um, this is something that really that where we already spent a lot of effort in. Um, but we we would need help and feedback from operators to. Uh, um, to get feedback how um, they use it and what is usable and what isn't usable for 
in our framework. So, um, yes, so for operators is always uh, interesting maybe to, to add new scenario tests because um, if somebody um, contributes a scenario test, you, can qu you, you, you are sure that your scenario that you put in our code, it will be checked for every single new patch that comes in. So if you contribute a new test, or especially a scenario test, you're sure that your scenarios really work in, in the source tree of OpenStack. Um, so another thing, documentation and reviews. Sure, sure, everybody is um, invited to help our in our reviews. Um, documentation is something that we are st having always some issues, I would say, in many areas. I think, yes, we have to improve that. And if you have feedback, just open, go to our ISD channel or create bugs and we will fix them. Um, another quite important thing is um, third-party vendors. So there's a group that uh, was built um, calling third-party testing group. So quite important, I think, for, uh, for, for customers is that they are sure if they using um, a open if they want to use OpenStack with a third party vendor like a driver or a plugin, Neutron plugin or something, they want to be sure that it really really works with OpenStack and it's not that it's not only a marketing slide. Um, with third party vendor tests, you could you could as a vendor um, create your test environment, run a certain kind of test cases that you choose and contribute this back to the review system. Um, so this is, this is a discussion uh, or this is a group. They have uh, weekly meetings. Maybe if you're a vendor, think about it to, to join there. I think it's, uh, it, it's a great effort and we really have to have that uh, in place. Um, so for new contributors, we have a lot of areas. I have in the next slide a list of blueprints and a lot of things. We have a lot of low-hanging fruits that can be um, um, that can be fixed quite easily. And I think it's really um, a nice field for new contributors to to contribute there. Um, as I, I think I mentioned it uh, some time, um, we are have our ISE channel. You can just ask if something is there to, to work on. We have, a, we, we have a, um, a spec repo, so there's all the features in where we are working on. You can have a look if there is something that interests you. You can just subscribe to this blueprint or ask the, uh, the main responsible um, what uh, has to be done there and for sure there will be something to do. Um, we have a weekly QA meeting um, where you can raise questions and ask if you want, would like. Uh, if you're already an active contributor and maybe you're active in another uh, um, project, you can think about your features that you implement quite recently and have a look in Tempest whether they the the, the um, test coverage is there for your feature for your area, have a look if it really if it's really tested and if it doesn't, please have a look how to how to do that. Maybe raise it in a QA meeting that there is something missing. We are um, also searching for uh, volunteers for QA liaison. So which is um, if you're active in one particular project, you you are let's say, a the contact person for the, for the QA uh, um, uh, program. So um, everything what, what is new and what comes up um, can be discussed there. So this is a w I, I um, will upload this presentation with a lot of um, links there. You can just click uh, on it. It's a wiki page. If you are active in a project, um, you can think about um, yeah, joining the QA liaison. So, um, Things that we need help on um, regarding speci special cases or, or um, um, uh, blueprints and specs that are open. One thing um, is that we have our design session um, sessions on starting at Wednesday. So you can simply join our sessions, um, have a look to SCAD.org, um, have a look what interests you, and just join us. You can discuss with us um, if you want to to 
uh, contribute something, just ask us and we, we will find some things to do. Um, for sure, um, there's a lot of um, current things that are in our pipeline. So one thing that I already mentioned is the Tempest library. So we move, uh, we separate um, our functional test ca or, or test cases from our framework. This is something which is, I would say, quite uh, a low-hanging fruit because, um, I mean, it's just moving code from one to B and adapt it. Um, another thing is we need uh, test coverage for sure. So if you are interested in a certain area, you can just have a look if everything is tested, if everything what you expect is tested in that. Um, try to um, to eliminate the, uh, the, um, the, the blank fields and, and uh, add new tests. Unit tests is something which we work um, yeah, s since I think two cycles and it's still not completely covered. So there's a lot of things where the framework needs to, to have more test coverage. So I think it is quite, um, quite easy. So negative auto testing and um, schema validation at all. So everything what is related to schema is maybe quite easy because you just um, transform an, um, an existing API schema and bring it into the um, um, Tempest uh, tree. So um, these are things um, which are quite easy to, to help us and yes. As I already mentioned, I think it's um, quite easy to, to, to have contact with us. Go to our channels, to IRC, chat with us. Um, we have a mailing list, so we are using the usual OpenStack dev mailing list um, with uh, the QA prefix. You, so if you want to, to um, write something there, you're welcome to. Um, our QA meeting is Thursday. Um, usually evenings or yeah it's it's um, we are rotating the time zone so we have one um, for more um, focus on the Asian time zone and one more for the US um, so we have um, possibility to raise bugs so if you see something missing just raise a bug I think there will be somebody that cares about it and you can create your own specs, your own feature thing. If you have an idea of a new feature, uh, if you see something missing in Tempest, you can just describe what you want to have. Um, there's a template for that. You can describe it in some detail, and then you upload it to our review system, and we get you, you will get our feedback. So this is, in a nutshell, what, what um, Tempest is. And I think we should take some time to, to have time for questions, if there are some. Just, I think there's a mic. What about your thoughts uh, on a situation when you need to deploy something outside of uh, OpenStack using Tempest? Suppose mm -hmm. you have what a DHCP server which is outside, which is external to OpenStack, and you want to test the interoperability in between OpenStack and uh, that DHCP. Okay, so so you mean you have your you have your OpenStack running, um, you deploy your application, you want to use Tempest no, or not necessarily running. Suppose okay. you want to deploy OpenStack on one node and uh, external DHCP, and you okay. want to test the interoperability in between them. Mm -hmm. So your approach is to run some additional, say, fabric tasks from Tempest or run something external to Tempest? I mean, what you with, with the, our new approach that we put everything into a library, you could use our framework to verify it. I, I mean, it, it depends what you're choosing. If you would like, you could use the Tempest framework to verify that the DHCP is running and to have an end-to-end -end test. What what um, the the thing is on that is that uh, if you you cannot c contribute it because you're you're relying on your setup, you have your DSCP server. Mm -hmm. This is something that is not in our uh, um, continuous integration system or dev stack. Uh, so this is something that you will develop for your own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you could use the Tempest framework to to create such tests and see maybe you we will find if you create such tests, you will find that there are some general approaches that you want to put into our in our framework and in our test cases. Hi. Uh, 
Um, Hashar hey. Abdi from Microsoft. Um, building upon the question that was just asked, um, how do we, um, is it possible to contribute tests back into the Tempest collection? For example, we have some um, drivers that we test internally mm -hmm. on OpenStack. How do we do that? And um, you know, just what the process is. And also, I wanted to find out what is the minimum set of Tempest set, or, you know, absolute essential Tempest set that needs to be executed. Mm -hmm. um, in other words, what's the possible exclusion uh, if you are a voting CI? Okay. Um, so if you if you have a driver as you mentioned you usually should have the usual um the 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 openstack api where you can rely on so if you have a neutron driver or nova driver whatever you will have the usual nova api you have a neutron api so you can put your own configuration in and you can use tempest to verify that it should work out of the box um yes so um, and uh, the, the other question is about the, um, let's say, third-party testing. So I think I'm not quite sure how um, defined it is, what kind of tests you have to execute. I'm not quite sure about that. But um, we, we had some text, uh, test groups like smoke tests and gate tests and so on, but this is currently not really used. Maybe we could use it in that way. I don't know, Matthew. Maybe you have some ideas, but yeah. I mean, um, essential tests. You can have a look on the defined uh, tests that are running on our continuous integration system every every single patch, and have a look uh, what kind of tests they are executing. Yeah. Hi, uh, Paul Gunnar from Orange. Um, you mentioned being interested in people go giving feedback on running Tempests mm -hmm. on production. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm a bit confused here. Do you recommend running Tempest on production or is there some sort of um, set of tests that could be run? Because I don't feel comfortable myself to run Tempest because it's quite a extensive mm. uh, uh, test ongoing and I, I'm not sure it's too healthy okay and um, and maybe um, I don't know about people doing actually it doing it without any uh, issues I, I understand running it for uh, let's say staging or a QA platform mm -hmm. uh, this is a very uh, convenient uh, uh, use but for production I'm a bit surprised I mean um it depends what, what kind of, of workflow do you have. I mean, um, if you have your test system, you have maybe a reference system and a production system, you could use Tempest to validate just the reference because you have, you're have you some kind of afraid to use Tempest in the production environment. Um, I think there's there's some ways to, to, um, to make sure that nothing goes wrong. You could use some isolation things. Um, we're spending effort on that, right? Uh, uh, sure, but I, I cannot recommend to use Tempest in our in a production environment. This is something that I think we need to have more um, feedback on that. I think at the first beginning, yes, as you already mentioned, we can use it for test systems. We can use it for reference systems. If um, if we see that. We, we solved our issues. I mean, we, one issue that we have that we have resource leakages so on some pa on some places. So at the end, the the system that that uh, uh, that uh, um, that so after the tempest run, you will have some resources that are already left uh, that are still left, and so on. That that's things that we have to solve. But I think at the end, we can think on some kind of smoke tests um, for productions as well. Or any other types of activities 
Hmm. So the, the the issue with the with the gate is that we have um, yeah limited resources. If you want to deploy a multi-node cluster with a lot of things, you will need a lot of resources, and we have a lot of patches every minute and hour. So that's that's the thing that limits everything. Um, in my personal opinion, I would say we are we have to rely on some um, third-party help on that, so that vendors or um, companies give us more resources to have real-life real deployments and test it on on that on that machines. Yeah, we, we have nightly tests, but nobody really looks at it at them. So for instance, the stress test is something that um, runs every night. Um, yeah, this is one possibility that we have pros and cons there, because the, the question is who looks at these tests? What happens if they fail? If they fail every time, who looks at them? Sure, this is one approach to, to solve this issue, this resource issue that we have. But anyway, yeah, it, somebody has to care about that. Uh, Olivier Jacques from HP. So just one question about the the test that you are going to review and, and accept in the Tempest test suite. So mm -hmm. how do you define what are the criteria to accept to accept the test? Yeah, good versus bad tests. I would say we accept nearly all tests that are um, capable to run. Um, that's for sure. They we have some kind of uh, um, criteria. Um, I don't know which kind of area we don't accept. I mean, the, f the first uh, thing, the first criteria is that they have to really run. It's not it, we, you cannot contribute tests that are by default skipped. Um, this is something. Sometimes people want to contribute tests because they are currently writing something or there's a bug in it. They they raised a bug, but and then they want to to have it included in Tempest and it's al always skipped. That's something that we do not accept. Um, I think this is one of the areas where we have some dis debates about accepting tests, whether accepting tests or not. But at the end, I would say we are accepting tests all over the place for all OpenStack projects. from Rackspace. Um, my question is, do you have uh, tests for negative scenarios, like a VM going to an error state or building indefinitely? And if not, what are your thoughts about it? Yeah, so we, we have negative tests that usually rely on a certain API, so they are quite basic. We don't have negative scenario tests. Um, yeah. Mm, yeah. Just in case, um, I'm going to be giving a talk about Mimic. It's a mock service that allows okay. you to do such testing. So okay. Maybe you could come. And sure. Feedback. Yeah, sure. It's on Wednesday. Okay, on cool. Wednesday. Great. So I think the time is nearly over. So thank you for coming. <laughs>